Welcome to Smart Catalyst, December 15, 2018. So from today onwards, we are going to cover only the prelims articles as the UPSC examination is around the corner. So these are the prelims articles. The first one is JNK Law to Stop Sextortion of Women. The second one is One Stop Centers to help the two crore women and the third one is high court quashes the center's ban on oxytocin the fourth one is fintech companies seek clarity on using other for electronic kyz norms and the fifth article is err and review 2018 by ministry of social justice and empowerment unique disability identification project and eco nivas shamhita 2018 and the year end review by another ministry which is the ministry of minority affairs so the National Medical Devices Promotion Council to set up under DIP and the minimum indicative export quotas and the price stabilization fund and the last article is electronic negotiable warehouse receipt system. So the first article is Jammu and Kashmir law to stop the sextortion of women. So this article talks about that the Jammu and Kashmir has become the first state in our country to bring a law to prevent the people in power from exploiting the subordinates sexually. So what the news here is, so the Jammu and Kashmir administration approved an amendment to RPC to insert a section in this RPC to provide for offence of sextortion. That means they are declaring this extortion as an offence. So first we are going to see what this RPC means. So RPC means Ranbir Penal Code, okay. Ranbir Penal Code. So we are having IPC, right? But that IPC is applicable all throughout the country except Jammu and Kashmir. So as Jammu and Kashmir is having Article 370, which gives special status to the Jammu and Kashmir, they are having this RPC, which is the Ranbir Penal Code, instead of IPC. So this RPC is only applicable to Jammu and Kashmir. Okay. So in that only, they are now going to change or amend such that they are including uh, offence which is committed by the any authority or a po person who is in a top position or a public servant or who is trying to exploit the subordinates sexually. They are going to make amendment in these two acts. Okay. So Prevention of Corruption Act and Jammu and Kashmir Cr Criminal Laws Act. So in that what they are going to do means in this Prevention of Corruption Act they are going to change the definition of misconduct. So they are going to include this sexual exploitation by the higher authorities as a misconduct under this Prevention of Corruption Act. Okay. That means any act of demanding or requesting sexual favours by the public servant to their subordinates is, a, is now under the ambit of this misconduct. So why they are doing this in the sense in order to curb the instances of women being victimized by the persons in authority or in fiduciary relationship. But if you see the existing or the present laws or the legal provisions is deficient to curb this menace. So only the, now they are going to uh, change or amend this laws. Okay. So if you see this Ranbir Penal Code, why this naming Ranbir in the sense? This code, this Ranbir Penal Code was introduced during the reign of Dogra dynasty which is under the rule of Ranbir Singh. Okay. So Ranbir Singh is the ruler during the implementation of this code that is why it is named as Ranbir Penal Code. Okay. And the government also approved for the introduction of use of video conferencing as an admissible method for the presence of the accused in the criminal trials thereby we can ensure the speedy trial and remand as well as it reduces the requirement of security for the taking accused from jail to courts okay so the next article is one stop centers help two crore women in our country so this article talks about that almost two crore women survivors of our country who are suffered from violence actually receive the help at these one stop centers which opened in the past three years. So this was put forward by the government in the parliament. So if you see from the background, it was established, that is these one-stop centers was established from the year 2015. And so far we are having 234 one-stop centers all across the country. And if you see, as per the data which is uh, put forward by the government, the Uttar Pradesh tops in this uh, list, that means the number of women who are seeking help from these one-stop centers 
और मोर इन नंबर इन उत्तर प्रदेश विद दीस मेनी नंबर ऑफ केसेस फॉलोड बाय आंध्र प्रदेश छत्तीसगढ़ तेलंगाना एंड सो ऑन सो इफ यू सी दिस वन स्टॉप सेंटर स्कीम इज सेटअप अंडर द निर्भया फंड ओके सेंटर्स निर्भया फंड अंडर दिस वनली दिस वन स्टॉप सेंटर वॉज इस्टेब्लिश्ड सो वॉट इज अ मेजर एम फॉर दिस सेंटर मीन्स इट इज टू प्रोवाइड assistance and support to the women who are affected by the violence both in private as well as in the public spaces so basically it is to help the women okay and also to facilitate immediate emergency and non emergency access to a certain range of services including for medical legal psychological and counseling support to fight against any form of violence against the women so for all these cases the women can approach these one stop centers so if you see in this picture this one stop centers are there to provide the supports and services for the survivors of the gender violence and it were launched under the nirbhaya scheme and this map shows the distribution of money under the one stop center scheme to the states so thereby the uttar pradesh and andhra pradesh and himachal pradesh they are actually receiving a lot of money under this one stop solution but still chatisgarh was the first state to have one stop center in all its 27 districts so these are the range of services provided under the one stop center the medical aid police assistance legal aid as well as counseling and temporary shelter to women who are suffering under these kind of violences okay gender violences so the next article is high court quashes center's ban on oxytocin manufacture so the news here is the delhi high court on friday quashed the center's decision to ban the manufacture and sale of oxytocin so the center has actually banned both the manufacture as well as the sale of oxytocin from april 2018 onwards so if you see the background here the union health ministry actually restricted both the manufacture as well as the sale of oxytocin by the private sector to in order to control the misuse of the oxytocin so if you see what is oxytocin means it is a natural hormone or neurotransmitter secreted by the pituitary glands of all mammals including the humans and it is only playing the key role in both the childbirth as well as the lactation and certain other social aspects of the human behavior but the after the ban of the oxytocin manufacture by the central government only the karnataka antibiotics and pharmaceuticals limited is the sole manufacturer and supplier of the oxytocin in the entire country so they they are the only responsibility to supply okay so why the government actually has banned this oxytocin manufacturing means because it is widely misused in the dairy industry to make the livestock release milk at a time which is convenient for the farmers so not only for this purposes but it is also used for the pregnant women in case of postpartum hemorrhage so nearly 5 women die every hour in india from the complications developed during the childbirth but if oxytocin is given to them then it actually prevent the death due to such uh, postpartum hemorrhage so it is the safety drug of choice by the doctors to the women that is especially to the pregnant women so why actually the delhi high court quashed in the sense the center's decision to allow a single state run entity that is the karnataka pharmaceuticals limited right so allowing only one entity with no prior experience in manufacturing of oxytocin to make as well as sell the drug was fraught with potential adverse consequences such as scarcity of the drug or even a restricted availability which may cause increase in maternal fertilities during the childbirth as well as it impair lives of thousands of innocent young mothers so the center has to take all these things into account and the high court is also claiming that there was no scientific basis and the data is also insufficient to support such conclusion that is actually the oxytocin is misused so there is no scientific basis for such conclusion so the center also take that into account so the next article is fintech company seek clarity on using aadhar for electronic kyc so what the news here is the fintech companies have recently asked the government to declare aadhar as an official valid document especially for regulated entities such as banks and nbfcs that means they as the ministry of electronics and it to permit the use of aadhar electronic kyc in case the customers are voluntarily submitting their documents that is aadhar document okay so why the fintech companies are actually requesting this in in the sense the aadhar based electronic kyc made it possible for several companies including the fintech companies to extend their credit as well as offer the savings and investment products and insurance to wide variety of consumers or customers and 
if you see the fintech firms they depend majorly on these kind of other based electronic KYC for quick as well as cost effective verification of the customers so it is time efficient so it is cost effective and time effective and an alternative which is a paper based or physical verification of the customer would be costly and it raises sustainability concerns also and out of 130 crore citizens nearly 50 crore citizens of our country have other as a only proof of their identity so exclusion of this other based electronic kyc actually increase the per customer cost of loan processing by the companies by almost six times while increasing the overall loan disbursement time also okay so it is not that much cost effective so in order to handle all these things only the fintech companies actually requesting the government to identify other as a official valid document so the next article is year end review 2018 by the ministry of social justice and empowerment so at the end of every year each and every ministry is actually releasing its year end review about its performance and achievement so one such report is now released by ministry of social justice and empowerment so as per the report the mandate of the social justice and empowerment ministry is to build an inclusive society wherein the members of the target group can lead productive safe dignified lives with adequate support for their growth as well as for their development so who are those target group in the sense these eight people okay so the first one is scheduled caste and other backward classes senior citizens victims of alcoholism and substance abuse transgender persons beggars and denotified and nomadic tribes and economically backward classes okay so in order to ensure social justice and empowerment of the target group this ministry has actually implemented a wide variety of programs one such program is this Pratan Mandri Adars Gram Yojana so its phase one was completed in 2014-15 and now the phase two is ongoing so what is the major aim of this Adars Gram Yojana in the sense to undertake the development initiative in SC majority villages so the village which is having a total population of more than 500 people and among them more than 50 percent should be SE population so for such village this Adarsh Gram Yojana is going to deploy the village development plan which is a cost based and costless efforts which is required to improving the village so it is basically to improvement or development for that SC majority villages so that is what the aim of this Yojana so in order to achieve that nearly 21 lakhs is provided to each and every village and in the 21 lakh 20 lakh is gap filling component and 1 lakh is for administrative purposes so this 20 lakh is for development purposes so the same ministry is actually doing this unique disability identification project also so as per this project they are going to create national database for the persons with disability thereby those persons are getting UDID which is unique disability ID card along with disability certificate so this UDID card will be made mandatory for those persons if they want to avail any government benefits or government services so this so as per this project a web based software has been developed and it is being shared with all the state government union territories through training of their personnel so that we can easily identify the persons disabled persons and we can track the persons and provide them what they actually deserve okay so the next article is Eco Nivash Shamhita 2018. So this is by Ministry of Power. So as per this, an energy conservation building code was issued for residential building from 2018 onwards. So if you see, there is already an ECBC for commercial buildings from 2017. And now they are targeting this residential building. Okay. So why residential building means because this sector is having a potential of highest growth in energy demand in the coming 10 to 15 years. So if we target them, then we can easily save 125 billion units of electricity per year by 2030, which is equivalent to saving or which is equivalent to reducing 100 million ton of CO2 emission. A similar report for the performance and their achievement is released by Ministry of Minority Affairs. So the first one is Hunar Hath. So Hath means market. So it is basically for providing market opportunities to master artisans, especially belonging to the minority communities. The second such scheme is Minority Cybergram Project. So as the na name indicates, it is of digital literacy. So it is a digital literacy project, especially targeting minority dominated villages 
and another scheme is Pratan Mandri Jan Bikash Karyakram. So this scheme is for infrastructure development in identified minority concentration blocks, minority concentration towns, minority concentration districts as well as villages. And the next scheme is Naya Savera. So this is basically for free coaching and allied scheme for the students in order to tackle the competitive examination and admission in technical and professional courses. And the next scheme is Pado Pardes. As per this scheme, an interest subsidy on educational loan for the overseas studies in technical and professional courses for the students is being given by the Mi Minority Affairs Ministry. So the next scheme is Geo Parsi. So it is basically for Parsi community as the population of the Parsi community is declining in order to maintain their po population, this scheme is actually launched. Okay. And the next one is Nairoshni. This scheme is for leadership development of minority women. Okay. So the next scheme is Siko Aur Kamau for skill development initiative for minority people and Nai Manzil for formal education and skilling of the school dropouts and Ustad scheme which is upgrading the skills and training in traditional arts and crafts for the development for the minority people and the last scheme by the minority ministry is Hamari Darohar which is a scheme to preserve the rich heritage of the minority communities under the overall concept of Indian culture. So these are the schemes by the Minority Affairs, which is mentioned in that air and review. So the next article is National Medical Devices Promotion Council to be set up under DIPP. So we all knew that the manufacturing and the trade in the medical devices industry in our country is growing rapidly, which include a wide range of products. But though the industry has been growing in double digits in the recent years, but the major demand is met only by the import driven which is accounting nearly for 65 percent of the domestic market that means even though we are good at this we are importing nearly 65 percent of the medical devices so in order to reduce the import as well as in order to promote the manufacturing indigenous medical devices the national medical devices promotion council is planning to be set up under the dipp which is under the ministry of commerce and industry and it was planned during the fourth WHO Global Forum on Medical Devices at Andhra Pradesh in Vishakhapatnam. So as per this, the composition of such council would be, the council will be headed by the secretary of DIP and apart from the concerned departments of government of India, it will also having representative from healthcare industry as well as quality control institution in order to check the quality of the medical devices. So that Andhra Pradesh Medtech Zone, which is at Vishakhapatnam, it will provide the technical support to the National Medical Devices Promotion Council. So what are the objective of such council is, it acts as a facilitating and promotion and development of the Indian medical devices industry. So it is the first major objective. And the second major objective is to provide technical assistance to such agencies and departments. Thereby, we can simplify the approval process which is involved in the medical device industry and to drive a robust and dynamic preferential market access policy, which means we have to identify what is the strength of our Indian manufacturers in terms of medical devices and those industries are given a boost or they have to promote them. So that is what this preferential market access. Okay and also to discourage the unfair trade practices in imports. That means uh, importing at a cheaper rate, those things should be avoided, okay? So th those are all taken care by this preferential market access policy. And also the council will validate the limited liability partnership and other such entities with MDI sector. Thereby we can add value to the medical devices industry sector as a whole, okay? So basically this council is to promote the manufacture of the medical devices. So the next article is minimum indicative export quotas. So this article talks about the central government fixation of minimum export target for white sugar which is in the range of 50 lakh metric tons. So if you s why they are actually fixing for sugar in the sense if you see in this picture the production of sugar in the current season of 2018 to 19 is very high when compared to the previous years. So it is 29 million ton. So this excess production can easily be exported to other countries, right? So why the government is actually planning to export white sugar at least 50 lakh metric ton in the sense, the sugar mills are now facing liquidity crisis. Thereby the sugar mill owners can't be able to pay their money to the farmers. So the farmers, they don't have the money for their further production. 
So as per the production capacity of the sugar mills, their export quantity is fixed and the sugar mills thereby can export the sugar to the other countries, thereby they can get the money back and they in turn provide it to the farmers, okay. So basically it is to help the farmers, okay. So earlier in the monthly stock holding limit order also, they issued like the sugar mills have to set their quarterly export targets and they intimate the same to the Department of Food and Public Distribution. So the next article is Price Stabilization Fund. So what this fund actually aims is to regulate the price volatility of important agricultural commodities like onion, potatoes and pulses. So this fund is applicable to both cash crops as well as for the food crops. So this fund can be utilized for granting interest-free advance of working capital to central agencies and state as well as UT governments or agencies in order to undertake market intervention operations such as maintaining a strategic buffer. So what is this strategic buffer in the sense they are going to it is like an inventory there you can store all the important commodities like onion potatoes and pulses in this case. So they are going to procure these items either from the farmers or from the wholesale mandis or by means of imports. So from all these they can procure these important commodities and they are going to put it or say um, have it in this strategic buffer. So why they are doing this in the sense this strategic buffer is actually meant in order to tackle or overcome the artificial demand which is created by certain producers. So this is basically to disgrace the hoarding by certain producers because if they store it in their own inventories then obviously it is going to create some artificial demand in the market thereby it increases the price of such commodities right so in order to discourage that only now the government is itself is maintaining its own strategic buffer which is by means of providing this price stabilization fund okay so the psf scheme was transferred from the ministry of agriculture to now the ministry of consumer affairs okay so it is now taken care by the department of consumer affairs and this PSF is not only utilized for these kind of strategic buffers but it is also can be used to provide fund or food aid to Afghanistan as well as the flood relief measures which was undertaken in Kerala recently. So you have to note one thing here that is the Ministry of Commerce is taken care of the cash crops such as or the commercial crops such as the tea, coffee, tobacco etc. But the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, it is taken care of the food crops, which is very essential for the consumers, like this onions, potatoes, tomatoes, etc. Okay. So the next article is Electronic Negotiable Warehouse Receipt System. So we have to know what this WDR Act means. It is Warehouse Development Regulation Act. So this act actually came in the year 2007 and it is came into force in the year 2010. So as per this act, in the year 2017, they actually started the practice of issuing receipts to the farmers for their produce, okay, receipts to the farmers for their produce in the warehouses. is basically a receipt which is given by the warehouses to the farmers for their produce. So this receipt can be traded with others, sold to others and swapped with other people as well as it can be used as a collateral for getting the loans. So these are all the purpose for which the receipts can be used by the farmers. So whoever the holder of such receipt, they can only claim the commodities which is stored in the warehouse. Okay. So basically this receipt is a deposition of form produce and it acts as a title for the depositor. So wha what are the benefits of such uh, receipts in the sense they can be issued by registered warehouse only to help the farmers for seeking loans from the banks against those receipts. So that means it can be act as a prime tool of trade and thereby they can extend the sales period. So now the produce of the farmers are safe in the warehouses so they can sell those products whenever there is a demand in the market otherwise they can keep it there okay so it extends the sales of sales period of the perishable products especially and it is act as a collateral for short-term borrowing not only for loans or long-term borrowing they can use it for short-term borrowing also so it is very credible thereby it enhances the bank's interest in lending to the farmers 
which can increase the liquidity in especially in the rural areas and it encourages scientific warehousing of goods especially among the farmers in the rural areas okay so these are the benefits of the negotiable warehouse receipt system thank you